ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان اسوتنا وقدوتنا وسراجنا المنير محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه صلوات الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن استن بسنته الى يوم الدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا وبعد فقد قال الباري جل جلاله في كتابه اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم اذ يوفيهم الله دينهم الحق ويعلمون ان الله هو الحق المبين قال الله جل جلاله انما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين امنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاه ويؤتون الزكاه وهم راكعون وبعد respected brothers and sisters and elders and scholars and friends alhamdulillah allah has blessed all of us once again with health and wealth and opportunity to worship Allah in peace and security walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin today i am embarking upon a journey i'm departing to a different country i'm going to bangladesh for a few weeks and i was thinking that i want to give you some advice before i leave a nasiha and i thought subhanallah what kind of advice can i give every week we're talking about different topics and you probably uh, hear me talking about different things at different times so i thought let me give you some nasiha that i may give to anyone that listens to me if i wasn't just leaving the country but if i was leaving the world if these were some nasai how to give to anybody that listens that these things i think are very important from my experience in my study years as well as from the few years that i've been serving in this masjid alhamdulillah first of the most important thing for every muslim and muslima to realize is that your only and true allegiance is to Allah and his rasul and the believing servants of Allah your true connection your true loyalty before everything else before everything else before your family before your children before your home before your culture before everything else your first loyalty is to Allah and then to his rasul and then to the believing servants of Allah the ummah of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah says inma waliyukum Allah wa rasuluhu walladhina amanu alladhina yuqimuna as-salata wa yutuna az-zakata wa hum raki'un This is important to realize what our original connection and loyalty is and what is our purpose of existence as you know you've heard it all of your life there is the, there is no other sole purpose the central purpose the core purpose why Allah made me and made you and made this entire universe is so that we may worship Allah. Allah says, "Who are the خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا?" That He has made for you, O mankind, everything that's in this world and beyond. What that means is, Allah has facilitated not just London or UK or the areas where Muslims are living, so that we may worship Allah. In fact. the entire existence the whole world the whole universe the heavens and the earth and everything that allah has made is all so that we may take ibra and lesson and realize that our sole purpose is to worship allah you look at the sky you see the sun and the moon these are alamat for you to see inna fi khalqi as-samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al-layl wal nahar la ayat these are signs for you to see so think of it this way allah made the sign so that you Muhammad Ahmed Hamid may be guided to realize that there is a creator and worship that one creator. Allah made the moon for that same purpose. Yes, it has a cosmological purpose. Your body 
and its parts have a biological purpose. But the actual purpose is so that we may worship Allah and everything around us is reminding us of that need to return to Allah. In fact, our essence, our soul, our ruh. Your essence, your soul, your body came later, your soul was there before. Your body will decay and go, but your soul will stay. Your soul, the only way to nourish your soul is to connect it back to its original loyalty, allegiance, its creator. That's why Allah says that only in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts and the souls find peace. This shows our sole purpose is to worship Allah and to realize that this is our actual original loyalty and allegiance and nothing should tamper with that. I say that because when you may stand in salah and there's noise around you, when you may stand up to give a lecture and there's people in front of you, when you, when you may give sadaqah and there's people watching you, at that point your intention may be difficult to maintain purity. Sometimes it gets a bit pressure, you know, the pressure can get to you that maybe the intention can be tampered with, become tainted, polluted. That's normal, though we should try to improve it. But when we know what our true allegiance and our true purpose is, when we go back into our privacy, when we have a moment to rectify our actions, when I go home and say, subhanAllah, I was praying salah, but for about two minutes I was not really focused on salah, I say, Allah, please forgive me, my salah was actually only for you. Forgive me for my error and for my shortcoming. That's why we say, astaghfirullah, as soon as we say salam. No, secondly, that there is no truth before the truth of Allah. Everything in this dunya, in your mind, around you, that you see all of the malahi, the games and the politics and the treasures and the beauties of the dunya, all of this is secondary. There is only one truth. One truth and one source of truth to whom we shall return to and find the truth. And that is Allah himself. Allah's, from his names, is Al-Haqq. Allah says, يَوْمَئِذِنْ يُوَفِّهِمُ اللَّهُ دِينَهُمُ الْحَقِّ وَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينَ Allah is the essence of truth. And so when there is any confusion, you don't know what the truth is, what falsehood is. The source to go back to, to find the truth, that pegs you down, holds you in place, gives you the correct and authentic information, is Allah and his kitab, because he is the haqq. Source of Haqq. He is the one that we shall return to on the day of al haqq of truth, of Qiyamah, and find all truths about lives and our actions and our intentions. There are so many ayat in that regard. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ Allah is the truth. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّهُ يُحْيِي الْمَوْتَ The other one is وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ ثُمَّ رُدُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ مَوْلَاهُمُ الْحَقِّ When you die, you shall return to your true creator. Allah Azza wa Jal. فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ Again, many, many ayat mentioning the sifa of Allah, that He is the essence of truth, He is the truth. فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ Anything beyond Allah, anyone that worships anything, their own desires even if it may be, is indeed in clear misguidance. Sometimes we don't want to, our arrogance or our distance and our thoughts, our ghafla, sometimes makes us realize or forget that we should be worshipping only Allah and we think, no, I'd rather do this, follow my desire instead of signing up for Fajr. I'd rather do this, save that money instead of giving it for zakat. But no, we should remember that Allah Azza wa Jal is the essence of the truth and He is the truth and what He says is the truth and we should go back to the truth when we may feel distant or confused from it. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu praised a shair called Labid. And he said, one of the most true statements made by any shair is the qawl of Labid, in which he says, Ala kullu shay, ma khala Allahu batilu. That anything that is without Allah is batil. Anything that you may have in this dunya, it may be so beautiful, so, you know, so, so, much, so much enjoyment in it, but if it is, not connected to, not according to Allah, then it's batil and it's baseless. وَكُلُّ نَعِيمٍ لَا مَحَالَ تَزَائِلُ He completed that, uh, that phrase with. And so, in the dua also, we say, in our qiyamu al-layl, when we say, Allahumma anta qayyimu al-samawati wal-ard, what do we say afterwards? Anta al-haqq wa wa'aduka al-haqq 
wal jannatu haq wal naru haq wal nabiyyun haq you want to know the truth you go back to allah his quran and its people to know the essence of the truth itself anything beyond allah the third thing you should know is that anything beyond allah anything that's out, not allah anything that's makhluq is contingent and weak we are weak Anything is anything beyond Allah is dependent upon Allah. Allah says, "Antum al fuqara wil Allah wa khalaq wa khulq al insan dhaifa in al insan khulq halua." And etc. So realize that while Allah is the truth and the source of truth, we are all everything else in creation in need of Allah, dependent upon Allah. Know also that there is nothing more beloved to Allah in His existence and His in His in His creation than His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nobody from this ummah will be able to go to Jannah except for behind the Prophet. The first to open the door of Jannah would be the Prophet ﷺ. You cannot attain Allah's pleasure. You cannot be obedient to Allah without following the Prophet. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. Man yuti'ir rasoola, faqad ata'a Allah. If you obey the Prophet ﷺ, you have obeyed Allah. Qul ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasool. And the ayat are numerous. Know also that this religion is perfect. If something seems imperfect, doesn't make sense in our deen. This ayah doesn't make sense to me. This rule doesn't make sense to me. This hukum doesn't make sense to me. Then the problem is you and I. Our intelligence, our grasp, our understanding hasn't been able to comprehend it. But the religion is perfect. And it will remain perfect. Because Allah has completed it. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم Anytime you have a confusion about the faith, you should go back to someone who is a reliable scholar and understand and clarify these questions. It is not the religion that's at fault, it is our understanding that's at fault and is weak. Know also that the unity of the ummah is fard. The unity of the ummah is not nafal, is not sunnah, is not mandub, is fard, it's wajib. Allah says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا don't argue, don't bicker, don't fight. Because then your honor and your dignity will go away. And you will lose. Rather be patient with one another, maintain unity. Unity is a fard in our deen. And the religion is composed in a way that helps us to be united. You hear in jama'ah, jumu'ah is jama'ah. Connecting unity coming together. Salatun jami'ah, salatul jama'ah in the jami'ah, in the masjid. Five salawat is to keep you united. We worship one Allah. We believe in tawheed. Just as tawheed is fard, the wahda and the unity of the ummah to come together to worship this one Allah is also as important as fard. And so therefore... We should understand its importance and realize that majority of our religion, regardless of our fiqhi ikhtilaf and difference of opinion in Islamic jurisprudence, or even aqadi issues where ulama have legitimately had difference of opinion on, where scholars, reliable scholars have difference of opinion on, right? Know that 80% or more of everything, all of the religion we agree on. Some we disagree. And even those disagreements are because Allah has permitted it, Allah has made it ja'iz. And it is in fact from the beauty of our faith. And so therefore, when somebody talks about these differences and tries to destroy the unity, then that person who is talking about these differences to try and destroy the unity, know that this person is misguided. It's as, it's as frank as that. If somebody is going to talk about ikhtilafat, small issues, sunnah ikhtilafat, ikhtilafat of approach, of usul, and etc., and try to destroy the unity of the ummah, which is fard. If you have fard versus sunnah, what comes first? Fard. So the person who focuses on differences and disunity and tries to disunite the ummah, that person, don't listen to that person. Stay away from that person. That person either is misguided unintentionally or intentionally either way that person is someone to be to be aware of and so therefore throughout the you know khutab and anasayih we try to maintain this this one message that we are one ummah 
and without this unity we shall fail and we are failing. If you as a, a normal person, a normal believer, think, Ya Allah, I'm just praying my salah and do my faraid. I don't know how I can be of service to you. I want to serve, I want to do something for the ummah. You don't know what to do. You're like limited, subhanAllah. You don't know because you're not, for example, an influencer or an alim, right? But you want to do something for the ummah. If you don't do anything else, then do this. Maintain and try to work for the unity of the ummah. Through your intention, through your dua, through your seeking of knowledge, through your actions. Because it's that important. May Allah give us a tawfiq and understanding. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Ahmadu Allah, ahmadu shakirin, wa nusalli wa nusallimu ala nabi al-kareem, Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa banaatina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar, rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfi lana wa tarhamna. أنا أكون أن من الخاسرين اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر إخوان المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها يا رب العالمين اللهم وحرر المسجد الأقصى يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين وانصر إخواننا في, في اليمن وفي كاشمير وفي الصين وفي الهند اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا في الهند يا رب العالمين اللهم سير إخواننا في أفغانستان وأطعمهم يا الله وأكسهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا وأعز إسلامنا وانصر المسلمين وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة